When 9-11 first occurred, I was at home. Uh, I'm a pastor, and so my deacon chairman called me and said, you got to turn on the TV. A plane just flew into the World Trade Center, and I, I did. Uh, it was about quarter till nine or so, um, and I turned it on, and I thought, this is unbelievable. All the flames and the smoke and everything. And as I was watching, the second plane flew in, and then I knew it wasn't a mistake or an errant pilot. It was somebody, it was a direct attack on America. And uh, I later found out about the Pentagon and then uh, Shanksville, although we didn't have any details of it, I knew that something here was wrong. So I threw, threw open the doors of my church literally um, at about noon and uh, allowed um, people to come in and pray just as they passed by. And people took me up on that. And uh, I even prayed with some of them. Then that evening we had a, a church service where, uh, an emergency call church service where we, um, uh, where we prayed uh, for what was going on. And uh, because of 9-11, my life has changed. I became more patriotic than I, than I used to be. And I tried to join as a chaplain and I couldn't because I was too old. So I decided, well, I just, um, I just volunteer as a chaplain, and so I went out to the Army in uh, Newcastle, and then eventually in Farrell, and then um, a colonel at the air base found out that I was doing that, and so she called me out. So I'm ministering right now to the Army and the Air Force, trying to give them hope, trying to give them strength, maybe some uh, encouragement, um, something that I can give as an older person that maybe a younger chaplain uh, could not do so. But it really has changed me in, in many ways. My life is steered uh, differently because of 9-11. I was at the State Realtors Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. We had an early morning session, so we were in that session, and then we had a break. And as we were going out to our breaks, all of us were getting phone messages indicating that something had happened and we had no idea what it was. And then rumors started flying about the fact that the planes had flown into um, the towers in New York. Um, we were, our session was finally just called and we all went to get coffee and um, stopped in at the restaurant there and the TVs were on then so we were able to witness what was happening. With 20,000 of us there in that convention center, it was frightening to not know, oh, were we getting an attack in every part of the country, and wouldn't that be a wonderful place? I was thinking in my own mind for uh, them to hit with some sort of uh, weapon when we had 20,000 uh, Midwestern realtors gathered there together. <clears throat> I wanted to go home, of course. I was scared, but everybody said, oh, you're fine here, everything will be okay. And we understood, too, that the roads to Columbus, in and out of Columbus, were closed because of federal buildings there. So we did stay, uh, but of course the tone of the entire convention was changed and um, everyone was concerned and calling home. Uh, we called, my daughter lived in Chicago, and there were rumors that uh, Chicago buildings were going to be hit, so she of course was very much afraid. As a result of um, the attacks, her work building began screening all of the employees. She was right next to the Sears Tower, so everyone had to have ID as they were coming and going in the building, and that certainly caused lots of fears on the part of those employees living there. I coincidentally put on Facebook today what I was doing as a result of uh, 911, and I had friends who um, sent me their messages about where they were. One friend said she was in New York City with her daughter, who was a United flight attendant, and they were on a bridge as the plane crashed into the first building, so they witnessed that. Uh, they were safe, but staying 30 blocks away. Another niece of mine sent me an email saying that she was in Washington, D.C. at a three-day seminar for her work when it happened, and of course she had to get in touch with all family members to assure them that she was okay. And since planes were not working then, her husband had to come pick her up and, and take her back to um, their home in uh, the Cleveland area. Uh. I'm uh, a millwright by trade at uh, Lordstown. I've been there for 32 years. Ten years ago, uh, I was working on what's called the turnstiles, the um, exit and uh, entrance to the uh, uh, our factory. And uh, 
somebody came out and said that a small plane hit one of the buildings at the, at the World Trade Center in New York City. And uh, on my lunch hour, uh, we have uh, break areas there at work, and uh, CNN News was, was on uh, in all those break areas. And, and uh, we sat there and we watched. Uh, by then, uh, both uh, uh, buildings were hit and, and on fire, and we just uh, watched in shock as one building crumbled to the ground and the second building went some time later and we just kind of looked at each other and uh, it was almost um, uh, unbelievable that uh, a, a large building like, like that would just uh, crumble all the way to the ground and both of them did the same thing and it was something. And on 9-11, I was uh, working in the school office at C1 Elementary, and uh, a parent came in to let us know the news. At that time, we weren't sure if it was an attack or if it was an accident, and the principal right away uh, turned on the TV, got a TV in her office, and we started watching, and it, we, you know, as the day grew on, we found out that it was an attack. One of our teacher's sons actually worked in that building, so it was uh, a very tense day for her. And um, I just couldn't believe something like this was happening, that somebody could actually do something like this to innocent people. And so when I went home, I just couldn't get my um, eyes off the TV. It was just a, a terrible sight, unbelievable. Um, and couldn't understand why it was happening, so um, couldn't get my eyes off the TV probably for a very long time. Uh, my youngest son and I had spent the night uh, at my parents' house because my wife was uh, working overnight at the hospital. Uh, so we awoke to have breakfast, and as we were watching the morning show, uh, you see that the south that the North Tower was on uh, on fire. And I, initially there was a lot of confusion, but uh, you know by the time the second plane hit we knew where it was that we were under attack and uh, as we all know we lost uh, close to 3,000 people, uh, civilians and firefighters and police uh, in those attacks and I just wanted to say uh, for all those who lost their lives may their memory be eternal. Well I actually had to work that day and it was uh, just kind of difficult to, uh, to concentrate knowing that uh, uh, these things were happening and um, it's one of those things you can, you can I can remember. It's a lot of the patients that I saw that day. That day sticks out uh, compared to your, your typical day. And on that day, um, I was getting ready for work. My son called me. He was at work. Um, he called me and he said, "Mom, turn on the TV. Something's happening." So I did. North Road School in Howland. I was the nurse assistant, and I had to be at work at 9:30. So I left for work. I got there, of course as the rest of the world was probably that day. We were all glued to the TV. And I walked into the principal's office to her TV in time to see the first tower fall. And I kept saying, it's a Die Hard movie. Or, you know, what was that old movie a long time ago? Orson Welles, were, they all thought that radio show was the real thing. I thought, this has to be just a movie. This can't be the real thing. Um, it was just horrific and my, my daughter had a friend who worked at the Pentagon when we heard about that, so I called my daughter. I said, Megan, where's Carrie? Is her office finished? Because she was in um, an office there that was being remodeled. And she said, no, Mom, Carrie wasn't there. Um, I had a friend, another friend whose son worked on Wall Street. So I called, I said, is your son okay? And she said, yes, he had applied for a job in that company that lost so many people and did not get it and um, you, you feel bad to feel blessed that he didn't get a job that somebody else did, but that he was safe. We just did, I, we all went to church, it was just how you changed your life um, in some ways. There's a group of four of us that go to New York City every year, every October. And October 11th of 2001, my aunt was flying from Atlanta, my cousin, from Denver. Um, I drove to Newark and we went to New York City. Um, it was a very scary feeling. Uh, we fly all the time, but I was very, very petrified the fact that my aunt and cousin were flying exactly one month later. 
the security in New York City was just amazing. Uh, the in Newark in the Penn Station train station in New York City or in Newark, there was security everywhere. Uh, I knew where to go. I've been doing this 20 years, but you couldn't do it the same. The roads were changed. The getting on the trains were different. Um, what you how to carry your luggage was different. Um, there was very few people. It was the first time I ever saw Times Square with very few cars. People in New York City came up to us and thanked us for coming. Uh, the, it was um, very different. That there weren't crowds. There weren't anything. Uh, it, it was a very emotional trip to see. You couldn't go to the um, World Trade Center site. They had blue tarps all over the roads, uh, so you couldn't see down there. And everybody would try to look through it. The only place you could get there was that one road that they showed on TV all the time with the dump trucks coming out of. And we walked down there, and there was a man standing there, and you just talk, you know, you just talk to people, how horrific, how everything. And that man said he had worked at the towers. Um, he walked to work with his brother every day, but he stopped for coffee and talked and didn't get in the building and had lost his brother, all his friends. Um, it was just, and he said he went, walked down there every day yet. He just would walk and stand all day. Uh, you saw bicycles attached to chain link fences that had just been there for a month. Um, there were cars in a parking garage way up. It was like on the fourth or fifth floor of this parking garage, and there was security. And I said to him, I said, how are they going to get their cars down? He says, they're not coming back for them. It didn't occur to me that they've been there a month. It, it was uh, the security measures that we had in the United States changed for the travel is, is I think, the, the most. They've always had it in Europe, the this, this security, but we were very nonchalant about traveling, and we're just not anymore. On September 11, 2001, I was at school. It was early my sophomore year. We had only been in school for only a few weeks at that time, if that. And I was in my second class of the day. We had block scheduling, so we only have four classes. And it was art. I'm sitting there doing an art project, and one of the upperclassmen comes in to our classroom and says, hey, an airplane just flew into the Twin Towers. I think America is under attack. And my teacher at the time literally scoffed at it and told her to get out of her classroom. Then 10 minutes later, about four other students came in and said the same thing. And we all went down to the media center to actually see what was going on. So our class, filed, and by filed I mean one large blob just rushed down to the media center. And it was there that we saw the first tower up in flames. And then not too long after that we saw the live footage of the second plane crash into the second tower. And we did nothing. We were just in awe. And not too soon after that the towers crumbled which was something that nobody had expected. And it was at that point that people started talking about the Taliban and all that, and that's the first time I had ever heard that word. And even Osama bin Laden, I'm like, who are these people? And I was starting to freak out a little bit, so I actually called my dad and said, hey, can I go home? And he's like, no, I know what's going on. You stay there at school. You're not going home until you are released. And they kept everyone in school that day and wouldn't let anybody out. So at the end of the school day, we were literally rushed home. We got on our buses. I had never got home that quick before. A route that should take 40 minutes took about 15 for everybody to get dropped off. And then once I was home, my mother actually came home early. And I remember flipping on the TV in every single channel was dedicated to the news, like channels you wouldn't even think, ESPN was covering the uh, attack. Nickelodeon was no longer there, it had the little logo in the corner, but it was a news station that was covering the attack. I think there might have been three channels overall that had regular programming. 
and that was it. Every single channel was covering the attack. And that night, I remember some sort of bulletin went out. I don't know how, if it was by phone call or what, or if it was the day after, but everybody in our neighborhood planted an American flag on the devil strip, or the tree lawn of the front lawn, and was asked to go out and uh, hold your hand over your heart or salute to the officers that were driving down the street for several minutes. And it was either that night or the day after, uh, everybody was at church. Everybody went to church. And there was a prayer service for all that had died and all the injured and all affected for it. Uh, I started like look, researching uh, the various religious because the school I went to was a Catholic school, it was JFK. So we looked into the different religions and how, you know, uh, these people thought and everything. So we gained a whole new perspective to, uh, as to why they would be declared a jihad and what a jihad was and the difference between the Muslim version and the Islamic version. It was extremely interesting, I should say. So for me, the attack on 9-11 was a massive learning experience. On September 11, uh, 2001, uh, my husband and I were having lunch with our daughter in London, England, when our niece from New York City called us and said, put the TV on. There is a plane that just crashed into the, um, uh, one of the towers, um, World Trade Center towers. So we immediately put the television on, and as we were watching, we saw the second plane come and hit the tower. We immediately called our son, who works in Washington, D.C. He's a lawyer there, and his office is downtown. And, and, and as we were making contact with him, uh, we heard on the news that the Pentagon had been hit. And so we said, Brian, did you hear that the Pentagon has been hit? And he said, no. He said, I was just looking at the news. I just noticed on, on my computer, I was reading the news. And we said, yes, the Pentagon has been hit. So get in your car and go home. Don't wait around. And that's what he did. He said, I closed my computer. I got to my car and I went home. Because later on that day, they would have not have let anybody in and out of uh, the city, uh, Washington, D.C. He lives in Arlington, Virginia, so he was able to get out. But we, my husband and I and my daughter, we had just returned the day before, September 10th, from a trip to Sicily. And we were so grateful that we had gotten back and because the next thing my daughter did was she got on, on on the phone with Continental Airlines we were supposed to leave the next day and all flights had been postponed so Continental said we have postponed all flights there will be no flights going out of London today or tomorrow or the next day you have to call back so we call back and we just made a reservation for Thursday for Friday Saturday, Sunday, every day we kept calling it and pushing the reservation ahead. And I think we finally got back to Cleveland uh, on Sunday after 9-11. And uh, we were supposed to come back via New York, but instead we had to go straight back to Cleveland, where we had departed from. And uh, so that was our experience. We were in London and everyone around town, when they found out we were Americans, they all expressed sympathy. They, they felt so bad for us. And then we went to church, to a Catholic church, uh, the Brompton Oratory, on that Sunday uh, and in the morning. And they, uh, after the minister gave a beautiful sermon, they sang the Star Spangled Banner. It made everybody emotional, you know, including me. <laughs> and because we said, wow, how ironic. 
you know, we use that uh, to free ourselves of the British. But now they're our friends. And so uh, we were treated beautifully by everyone. And eventually we got over the shock and we were able to function normally and go around shopping and, you know, do what we had to do until we came home. But it was a terrible thing. Back on 9-11, 10 years ago, I was in Cincinnati for a convention and woke up, had breakfast, we left and went to the convention hall. There seemed to be a sober feeling with people walking around. I had no idea at that time what was going on. And then all of a sudden we ran into a friend and he said, did you hear about what happened in D.C.? I said, no, no D New York first and then D.C. No, we didn't. So as we talked to other people, found out about the happenings in the Trade Center and everything, and they were hooking up TVs in the convention center to let people know what was going on. And at that time, I think, it made you think what was going on, the fact that we were attacked at both places. If something happened, nuclear, which you didn't hope, but something going on with another country, well, it made you think in perspective that because of our two oceans, we've been protected all our life from foreign invaders or anything. It just made you start thinking, though. Is it time for us to leave this convention and go home? We did make some calls back to family to make sure. But I think it was a rude awakening, and over the years we've taken everything for granted, being in the country that we live and being so well protected. But everybody doesn't have the same constitution and feelings about their country as we have for ours. And it was really a rude awakening for me. I think that uh, in retrospect now, I think you get to appreciate this country more and you never know what's going to happen. It was, it was just a terrifying time there. And we did stay the rest of the convention for several days and had a lot of discussions, a lot of people. Everybody had their own thoughts, but it was a rude awakening for me. It really was. 9-10, I had flown home from Rochester to Rochester, New York, to Memphis, Tennessee, which was where we were living at the time. And I had been at my best friend's wedding. And I stayed up late that night, and the next morning, my husband, who was already here working in Warren, called me, and he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And we chatted for a minute. And he said, are you sure you're okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. And we talked for another minute, and he said, are you positive you're, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I just, you woke me up. I'm sleepy. I need my coffee. And he said, oh, then you don't know what happened. And I said, no, what happened? And he told me, he, actually, he didn't tell me. He just kept saying, it's just awful. It's just horrendous. It's terrible. And he just kept saying that over and over and over again. And I said, what are you talking about? And then he finally told me. We talked for a few more minutes, and then he had to get back to work, and I went in and watched TV all day long. Um, we lived next, er, it, my subdivision was right next to the church that we were attending at the time, and they had a prayer service at noon. And my daughter was living at home at the time, but she had one of the cars on campus, and my husband had the other car at the airport. So I walked to church, and it was um, a very nice service. It was a, a huge, huge church, like many of them are in the South. Um, and, but it was so intense. I had to leave after about a half hour, 45 minutes. It just, he didn't, we had, a little bit of prayer at the beginning and then it was just total silence and people were crying and people were praying and, and um, it was it was just different than anything I'd ever experienced in my life um, and like I say I had to go home after after a half hour or 45 minutes or so um, and of course I stayed glued to the television 24-7 just like everybody else and um, it was sort of an odd year for us, and we had, we didn't really have any friends, and there was nobody that I could call and say, I just need to be with somebody, come have a cup of coffee with me. And it was the most alone I have ever felt in my life. On 911, I was in England with my wife, visiting my daughter in London. 
and we were having lunch together and suddenly we got a telephone call from my niece who was in New York. My niece told us about a, a plane that had crashed into the World Tower. Uh, then we, um, we put on the TV immediately and we saw the second plane go into the tower. Uh, the reaction was quite emotional from our part because my niece had taken us to the restaurant on top of the World Center and we had eaten there one evening and it was so unusual because there were clouds that were coming around the windows and it felt like you were in the heavens in that World Trade Center. It's a beautiful, beautiful restaurant, beautiful uh, venue, beautiful environment. And uh, then immediately I, I thought of that and then my mind suddenly flashed to these people who were so high up in that tower wanting to escape and couldn't. And I'm trying to visualize or think of the pain that must have gone through their minds as they had to make a choice as to whether to jump out a window or whether to burn in a fire. And it was quite emotional because we had been there and we, had, we knew what it was like. That evening we went to a church and what was so interesting to me is that at the close of the service the church, and this is in England, played the Star Spangled Banner. And Francis Scott Key, who wrote the, the, the words for the Star Spangled Banner, had thought that that would ever be played in a church in England. He probably would roll over in his grave. It was uh, very unusual. And what was so nice in traveling that day in London, the people, when they sensed that you were an American, were so considerate as though it happened to them. I stood in line, I took my daughter's laundry to the, to the laundry, and uh, I was there, and there was a couple of women in front of me, and I happened to talk to one, and one said, oh, you're from America. Oh my goodness, yesterday was that tragic thing. Well, why don't you just go and step in line in front of us? Uh, we, we don't, you know, we, we have plenty of time. And I said, no, that's all right. No, we, we'll queue up like the rest. And um, it was so nice to find that bond. That bond was not only among the people of America, but there were people in other nations who felt that tragedy. Ohio. And on September 11, 2001, well, I was teaching in Southeast Ohio, actually Noble County, Noble Local Schools, and um, I was one of the teachers at that time who did not have a television set in their, in their uh, classroom, and so I never heard about September 11th until about three hours after it happened. And what happened was that I was on, we were just going through, you know, just the day just normally as it, as it was. And then I went on cafeteria duty that day and I actually found out that that was uh, what, uh, what had happened then. Uh, what, what, what it was was that one of our special ed uh, aides actually came up to me and she said, well, gee, I hope that because of all of this that my husband who is in the Army Reserves, I hope he doesn't have to go over right away. And basically what happened was I said to her, well, what happened? And she then told me that um, the, uh, about the planes hitting the Twin Towers and about the, uh, uh, the plane crash in Shanksville and uh, also hitting the Pentagon and that. And uh, I walked into, um, after my duty was over, I walked into the, um, the, the teacher's lounge and basically there was nobody in the teacher's lounge. And I said, oh my goodness, well, somebody walked in and they said, we are actually in uh, the library watching this on television as it unfolds and so that was the first time that I actually saw the footage of it then. Um, I tried to go about the rest of the day as normally as I possibly could with the kids because I didn't want to get them all upset. You know, they say that when something huge like that happens, you know, just try to, to keep the kids on as normal a, a keel as possible and being that I taught special ed students that was very, very important. So basically that was, that was what I did. Um, I recall um, telling the children uh, at the end of the day, I said, you go home, turn on your television sets and watch what happened today. I said, this was something that was really, really big. 
And so um, when I walked out of the building, I recall looking up in the sky and I looked there and I said, oh my goodness, there's no contrails in the sky because you could usually see the plane contrails and nothing was there. And um, I also realized that maybe the interstate was closed and we had Interstate 77 that ran right through that area. So I said, I better go home on the back roads. So I thought that was what I did then. Um, in the days after that, then I had the children um, tell me what was going on, you know, and tell me, did they find anybody? Um, how many people did they think had died? Um, who did it? And that sort of thing. And it kind of became almost a current events lesson for us then. And, you know, we try to teach the children from that, you know, that you should be tolerant of other people, you know, even though you may know somebody who's Muslim and that, that, that does not mean that they, you know, would uh, be the type of person to do that. And so that, that was just basically what we did then. So. Um, where I was on September 11, 2001, I was in Warren, uh, actually in Niles at the AAA. I was in a meeting and one of our employees came in and said that a plane had hit the, the Twin Towers in New York. Of course, our first thought being a travel agency was it was an airline disaster and we needed to get into disaster mode and start helping people with rearranging flights getting to where they needed to go because we knew that there, there would be delays throughout. And when we went out to turn the TV on to see what had actually happened, the second plane hit. And we all saw that. And when it hit, then we knew that it was just such an overwhelming feeling of the United States being under attack. God, it's still emotional, you know, that, that we were under attack and w where was it going to go from there? You know, where, what else was going to happen that day? And of course, as the day progressed and we kept hearing, uh, you know, there was one, a plane that flew over the area that, that ended up in Pennsylvania. There was um, the Pentagon getting hit. It was just very emotional and it was a very quiet day. I just remember it being so quiet. We stayed at the office and of course we were fielding calls from people. We did get an awful lot of calls from, from people on what was going on and how, you know, that they had to cancel. Nobody wanted to, to, to change anything or to try to go on their trip. They just wanted to make sure that we knew that everything was canceled. And, and then, you know, several weeks, for several weeks after that, it, it, was, it, it was very difficult for us because people were stranded. People couldn't get home. They were already on their vacations. The, the airspace was shut down. When they finally did open up, it was hard to get everybody back to where they needed to be. Uh, we had people renting cars and driving cross country just to get home because there was no airline service. So it, it, it hit a lot of different inter industries in a lot of different ways, and it was just very emotional. Um, we kept the TV on for quite some time every day until one of the employees finally came and said, I, I really can't take it anymore. Can we turn the TV off? It, it was that emotional that some of the people just couldn't even watch it. They didn't even want to see it for a while. And, and then that evening, of course, it was very interesting how many people turned to religion that evening to help them through it. Um, the churches were packed. You know, every church was packed. The ch my, my children were 12 and 15. I don't think they, the 12 year old really, I don't think had full comprehension of what this meant even at 12, you know, what it really meant and, and, and how the world was changing and what was happening. But the 15 year old did. But it, it was interesting to see how many people actually filled the churches that night. And that's one of my big remembrances from it. 